Do I usually show up 15 minutes after the hour? Oh God, do I usually show up 15 minutes after the hour? I'm not supposed to. It's supposed to be 10 minutes, but sometimes shit happens. I don't know. Shit happens a lot of times, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, how often do I show up and say, sorry? 10-ish, <laughs> yeah, we'll say 10-ish minutes is typically when I'm here. Yeah, I'm on my way, goobers. I don't know, we're working on it. Hold on, my camera's like super unfocused. Who's <sighs> counting? When I watch the VOD, I usually skip at least eight minutes of the intro. Yeah, I mean, it'll be at, le it'll be at least 10 minutes. I say this, but I'm showing up about eight minutes into this one, so. It's fine, don't worry about it. Um, wait, let me start over. Hello, welcome, welcome to Saturday, Sunday, su shit. Hold on, let me start over. Hello, welcome to Sunday morning, Duker. <laughs> wow. Wow, we wow, 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 we wow, wow, wow. <laughs> it was perfect. Everybody agrees. <laughs> It was perfect and nothing went wrong. All of it was good. It was all good. It was really good. <laughs> Nailed it. Hold on, let me tweet. Because we don't normally stream at this time. So. Uh, uh. Okay. Streams on my Sunday? More likely than you'd think. And by that, I mean it happens occasionally. <laughs> uh, yeah, somebody was asking. I, I, t I said this on Friday's stream, but I realized I never like tweeted or anything like that explaining. The reason that Saturday Morning Dugger didn't happen is because my sister-in-law messaged me and was like, hey, um, I'm gonna be out of town. Uh, is there any way that you can watch one of my kids? I don't need you to watch both. I can, I can. it's easier to find somebody to watch the baby, but like, would you be down to watch Tommy, who is like a six-year-old? And I was like, yeah, sure, no problem. Clarky adores Tommy. So uh, he, he was over for the whole day. Um, and it was very fun. They really ramp each other up though. It was like, it was really easy until about halfway through the day. And then it, it started to get like, <laughs> like a bit wild. They were getting really snippy with each other. I was like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> we did do crafts. We did do crafts, but um, he really wanted to do stuff with clay and I still hadn't bought any more clay. So I was like, well, the clay that I do have is a little bit weird. Um, I would rather not use it because uh, people are saying that it might have been sitting on the shelf for too long before I bought it. So I'd like to get some different clay. So any ideas that you had for a project with clay, I don't think that we're gonna do. Honestly, the real issue, I think, um, ooh. The real issue, I think, was that he wanted to do VR, all of the stuff from Neon Divide, um, and then Lawman's birthday, because I stopped Neon Divide about half an hour early so that Sam could hop in and and do Lawman's VR birthday, which was very cute. Uh, but he came over and all that stuff was still out, and I was like, oh shit, I didn't put it away. And Tommy was like, I want to do VR. I want to do VR so bad. I want to do VR so bad. And for me, it was, I'm fine with Tommy doing VR. And I've asked his parents before and they're fine with Tommy doing VR. The issue is that I don't think that Clarkie would be able to do VR. And I think it would really upset her if we were doing it without her. So I was like, well, we, we used it all night. We actually used it for work all night. So the controllers are 
are dead, which is true. I was like, the controllers are totally dead. So I'm gonna have to charge them. And I don't think that they're gonna charge up enough while you're here, which was a skewing of the truth. We totally could have like used them at a certain point. But um, uh, I just, I really didn't want Clarkie to get like upset that she couldn't, that she couldn't play with us, you know? So I was like, how about, cause apparently he's on break. So I was like, how about one of the days when Clarkie isn't here, um, cause she's at school, you can come over in the morning or in the afternoon um, for a couple of hours and, and do VR. And we'll make sure everything's like charged up for you and ready to go. And he was like, okay. You can tell that he does not think I'm gonna follow through on this, which means I apt I have to, and I have to do it fast. Like I have to, I have to do it like in the next week, so that he's like, "All right, <laughs> all right, these adults aren't gonna aren't gonna lie to me." <laughs> okay. No, he watches YouTube, but he doesn't watch Twitch. I'm pretty sure. And if he does see this, what's up, Tommy? I actually think you're a super cool kid. <laughs> I think you're super cool. But yes, I did fib to you a little bit because I didn't want Clarkie to lose her absolute mind. And I do intend on you coming over and doing VR without anybody bothering you, so. Maybe, maybe it'll all pan out. I watched Spat's live stream, holy hell. I know, dude. No spoilies, no spoilies. But I did, I did manage to record. I did record Neon Divide this time. Uh, I'm gonna cut it up. because, And I think this might be what I do with all of the episodes because uh, Moral, at least right now at this point, Moral is a lot of cafe RP. It's like a lot of me just kind of chilling. And honestly, for moral, it was pretty quiet, but there were like specific things I would love to cut together into like a, this is what moral did on episode two, sort of a thing and cut out the dead air. So. <laughs> that sounds fun though. <laughs> Yeah, it was um, honestly, I think the best moment. So Friday also, we had a ton of issues specifically with the Undercity map. So any of you who watched uh, somebody who was streaming from Undercity, you might have noticed that there were a ton of issues. Um, one of, uh, once we were finally able to get into the map, <laughs> I immediately went to the cafe because I was like, I'm supposed to be at the cafe at the start of the episode, right? So I immediately went to the cafe and I was like, we're having trouble spawning stuff in. I'm going to make sure that a cut. So the, the way that it works at the cafe basically is there's, um, I loved your apron. It looks so good. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We designed the apron on stream, which was very cool. Uh, that was very, very fun. And then Como, obviously, um, is the one who's been adding all of the different accoutrements onto Moral. So shout out to Como. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> I was like, well, when we were in, uh, in sort of like, there's like an area that you spawn into that isn't technically the map. Um, and then you choose where on the map you need to go from there or like spawn in items that you need or check whatever, right? It's, it's like the spawn area. Um, and people kept trying to spawn in their guns and things and nothing was popping up. So I was like, okay, obviously while the map is reloading and stuff is getting redone, um, things aren't spawning in properly, right? So I went, to, I went to the cafe and I was like, I'm gonna spawn in a cup ahead of time because the way that it works is we have little coffee machines in the cafe and when somebody orders a coffee, you, you are encouraged through the magic of RP. You're encouraged to like mime that you're pouring it, but really what you're doing is you're highlighting the coffee machine and you click it and then it spawns in a coffee cup, right? So, 
So I was like, I'm gonna spawn in a cup ahead of time. I click it and I turn around. Cause I was like, that's probably gonna take forever to spawn because everything earlier was taking forever. So I was like, I'll just leave it and let it spawn, right? I turn around, I'm just kind of like sitting there, just chilling, like, you know, waiting for somebody to come into the cafe. It's pretty quiet. I turn around and literally the biggest possible gun that you can have on the map has spawned on our counter. And I was like, oh. <laughs> our coffee machine was only spawning guns. <laughs> Oh no, and I, <laughs> I kept trying to get, I kept trying to get them to despawn and I couldn't. So I was like, well, this is I guess <laughs> so I like hid all of them under the counter. <laughs> and then Conk, Kier's character, Conk comes in. I was like, hey, can we you know, can we like get a coffee? And I was like, yes. So I turned around and like mimed pouring a coffee and like handed nothing to him and he was like Yes, I will take this coffee cup that is here. I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah. I was talking to Cordy and Cordy was like, did you just kind of like roll with it? Like, what did you do? I was like, there was no one else in there. It's no one will believe me until they see the footage. Like I was literally just in a cafe with a bunch of guns and it was just me. And then the best part, was like, um, eventually all of the the guns and things that had spawned were suddenly coffee cups. So then I like, it felt like I was not paying attention for a second. And then once I looked, there were just coffee cups everywhere. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> okay, cool. So oh, it was pretty funny. That's basically the way that, that the episode started for me. VR was just trying to make the meme. Yeah, it was like, your picture is you with a gun, and yet. <laughs> How does that even happen? The system just gets confused, right? Like, think there's obviously stuff that is meant to spawn guns or meant to spawn, you know, runes or like whatever. And obviously all of the the things that were spawning items were just pulling from a pool of items and being like, this? <laughs> and I was like, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that was the start of Morals Day. Um, a lot of, a lot of my, a lot of my episode was like quietly trying to set up a really stupid prank, which is why the way, <laughs> the way that the, epi the episode ended in like a really upsetting way for a lot of characters. I was not there, but um, so <laughs> when people later were talking about their episodes, I was like, that is nothing like what Morals Day was like. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I'll, uh, I'll cut together. I'll cut together the important stuff. I have to anyway, because I had gone to, well, okay, if you don't want to know what I did, if you don't want to know what I did and you want to just like see it later or hear about it later, um, mute while my finger's up. So um, I had said that, that Undercity right now is kind of like, um, is like a weird like gentrification sort of storyline in ways. Um, the Undercity got like completely destroyed at the, not destroyed, but like had a lot of issues at the end of season two that where we needed to rebuild it basically. And so the story a year later is that one of the corporations called Masaru came in and helped rebuild. And so there's like a ton of Masaru people around. They basically like own everything. Um, and they're slowly pushing further and further to see how much they can do without pushback, right? It's And one of the things that they did this last episode was they handed out sheets that were property sheets that were basically like, we need you to list exactly what things you think are yours and explain why you should be allowed to keep it, basically. And all of us were like, what the 
fuck is this, <laughs> right? And some people were trying to argue like, no, 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 it's a good thing because they're wanting to like sell back like some, some of the property they wanna sell back to like people who are here and stuff. And we were like, no, this is gross. This is yikes. So moral, <laughs> I went to one of the DMs, not DMs, yeah, D yes, DMs. I went to one of our map DMs and I was like, if I, because it's a Google doc to fill out, it's a Google doc that, that you actually fill out as your character. So I went to one of the map DMs and I was like, what if, what if I filled this out like 20 times? What, is that a problem? And they were like, if you in character can get this form 20 times, then you can fill it out 20 times. <laughs> so that's, that's what I did. <laughs> that's what I did with my episode. Um, is I was like, all right. Basically one of, one of the other characters, Pebbles, who's amazing. Pebbles was like, fuck this, I'm not filling this out. And I was like, well, at the very least, we can waste their fucking time. And then, <laughs> so, uh, that's, that's what I'm, I'm gonna have to physically, as a person, as a human, I have to fill that out. Not quite 20 times, but close enough. <laughs> I have to fill that thing out so many times with stupid fucking, like <laughs> just really stupid shit. So, um, there you go. Identically? I can't believe I waited 10 minutes to comment. Well, we make people wait a long time after they've followed to be able to talk in chat because um, it is a really good way to deter uh, harmful bots. Uh, which have gotten really smart and will follow you in order to comment and things like that. Uh, and also raids that are attempting to be really malicious. Um, so it's uh, to protect the people in chat and to make sure that stuff stays in a, in a, a good way. Um, so we appreciate that you waited the 10 minutes. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyways, so that's um, that's what I'm gonna be doing. <laughs> that's what my character is doing. And meanwhile, a bunch of very serious shit was going on, and I was like, "This is this is my plan for the day." <laughs> um, but yeah, it was a good episode. It was good. It was good. <clears throat> And then I was very tired in the morning and then my nephew showed up and I was like, I'm gonna drink so much coffee. Sorry, I got distracted. <clears throat> let me scroll up, let me scroll up. Just keep lurking if you're a bot. What if your writing became less and less coherent as you did more of them? Um, well, I can't answer now because <laughs> because the finger's down, but uh, I do not intend to do this seriously. If that answers your question. <laughs> yeah, I think the recording went fine. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna chop it up because there was a lot of like, just. We do, we sell cocoa in the store. Hi, milkman.
Is it? Wait. Are you going to include the gun fiasco? Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. I will include all of it. All the, Anything that was funny? Yes, 100%. Um... The, okay, sorry, let me see. Someone was asking. Yeah, it was Gold Saucer. <clears throat> oh, God. My nose has been killing me for the last three days. But I think it's one of those situations where like, um, the more that I mess with it, the worse it gets, you know? <laughs> Hi, Sparkle. Yeah, it was good. I was just, I was just talking about it. I was just telling everybody um, my sinister plan, uh, but I did it with a spoiler finger up. So we don't want people talking about it in chat in case people want to like watch it later. But don't touch it; it gets worse. Yeah, exactly. It's one of those. I've been sleeping on some VR goodness with Dodger. I'm in a I'm in a VR thing called Neon Divide. Um, and it happens every Friday night. I don't stream it though. I don't stream mine. I've just recorded. I tried to record the first episode and it didn't go well. I recorded the second episode and the recording looks fine from what I've seen of it so far. So I found out what was going wrong is that, <clears throat> do you remember when I was like, I don't understand why there's a green screen filter on this? It was because I was trying to do the thing. Um, so people do a cool thing where they'll show what you are seeing in first person. And then they'll also take basically their, the in-game camera and point it at themselves. And then it has a green screen filter on the back that you can turn on so that people can see what you are seeing as a character and can also see your character. I have yet to be able to get that to work properly. So my footage of the second episode is just what Moral sees. Um, but uh, I had been messing around with that before. And so I had put a color filter on one of them, but not both of them. So I was like, okay, I'll get rid of the one that has the color filter and leave the other one and it should be fine. It was not fine. <laughs> It wasn't fine because apparently the way OBS works is if you've applied that filter to that thing before, it will just apply it again. So I know it's, uh, most people in, in Neon Divide do that. I just don't know how to do it properly. And I tried to follow a tutorial. I think, yeah, I probably should just hit up um, Kraken. Actually, I'm gonna do that now. Um, and you get a chance. There we go. There's a camera for third person POV and instructions and info, but you have to put it on your avatar. I know, and I don't know how to do that. Maybe I can ask Como to do it for me. I feel bad asking Como to do so much stuff on Moral, even though even though Como's been like, I wanna do more, I wanna do more. I feel bad being like, can you just put the camera on me? <laughs> But yeah, there's like one that you can have built into your character. I need to remember, don't let me forget. I have to add, Tomato has new art for Adelord, for Godforged, and we need it added for the intro for tonight. Don't let me forget. When I'm like, all right, I'm leaving now, be like, Put out a word in the intro. <laughs> Cause he sent it to me like right before stream, so. 
It's easy if you have your project, you just drag it to your avatar and adjust the height and width. I can show it later, real easy. Oh my God. If you could show me how to do it, I'm so stupid when it comes to this stuff. You would save my life. <laughs> This is a heater. This is a heater that my husband bought because his office was getting insanely cold. I went through the whole house and bled all of the radiators. So good job me. Um, uh, and he hasn't complained about his office being too cold since then. So maybe that helped. Maybe that was part of the problem. Uh, bleeding the radiators, it's where you take, well, I actually, I couldn't find the actual key for it, so I just used a knife. Um, but you basically, like, there's a little bit on the side of the radiator when they're built into the wall. Um, and you basically turn it, and if there's any air in the pipes, if they're, if they're heated by water, if there's any air in the pipes, you just turn it until like a little droplet of water comes out and then you screw it back. So if water comes out, you know all the air is out of it basically. Um, so there were a couple rooms in the house that felt a lot colder than other rooms and also that um, kept making weird like cranky noises. <laughs> and I was like, I'm gonna just bleed all of the radiators, so. Yeah, I used a knife to bleed the radiators, exactly. <sighs> so. It's more of a burping of the radiators. I called it burping once and um, a maintenance person laughed at me. <laughs> And I was like. How's the new Brett D&D going? Good, yeah, we've only done one episode, but it was a really good first episode, I think. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Where'd you get the chair from? Do not buy this chair, it's terrible. I know it looks good. I know I've had it for forever. It's a personality flaw. Don't get this chair. <laughs> it's a bad chair. It breaks all the time. I've seen it on Amazon. It has medium reviews. It's not a good chair, yeah. <laughs> Dash is a sweetheart. He's going to be put through the ringer. A lot of people were like, so I, I basically, not, not entirely. There's a lot of stuff that I've kept to myself about Dash, but like chat helped me sort of develop what Dash would be. Because I had said, I really want to play um, a character at some point in a campaign that's like, you know, basically the NPC cop or the NPC guard that gets wrapped up in an adventure. That was like the, the elevator pitch, right? I was like, I want them to be sweet and naive and just like, you know, they're just like from a small town, they want to like help. Um, and then, you know, ideally then everybody else in the group is normal adventurers who are just absolutely batshit. <laughs> um, and so that's based, that was basically the like starting point for Dash and we had talked about it a lot on stream. Um, <clears throat> and that's who I wound up making for Brett's game. Uh, and a couple of people, I really committed, I feel like, really committed to this idea for a character. And, um, and a couple people were like, <laughs> a couple people were like, I don't, I don't know how Dash is going to work in this group. And I was like, that's the point. <laughs> that's really, that's really the point. That's the whole point of this. <laughs> I looked 
worked on Steam is Dash a game. No, Dash is my character in a D&D campaign. Um, it's called Deadbeats, and it's basically a cop drama, but played as a D&D game. Um, and so I'm playing a paladin named Dash, who is at start of campaign lawful good. Um, <clears throat> and he's just a sweet boy. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe it won't change, but, uh, you know, I feel like... When you are an extreme, when your character is an extreme and you know that stuff is gonna get challenged for them, I think it's I think it's valuable to not be like, and they are lawful good, right? Uh, I think it behooves you to be like, and as of right now, <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah um yeah I love the idea of playing somebody who's like really naive and that naivete is gonna is gonna be challenged really quickly and honestly I think it already started in the first episode but like um it's also I think gonna be good in a campaign where <clears throat> this is kind of the elevator pitch so I don't I don't feel like I'm spoiling anything but three of us are cops um, and three of us are convicts and if you want to know why that would work and why it's not going to be like a campaign where three people are like I'm evil and three people are like I'm good then I would encourage you to watch it um, because that's not what the dynamic is at all uh, but I do think like in this group, it's going to be valuable to have somebody who's a little more optimistic. <laughs> and it's okay for that to get challenged, of course. Um, but I think I think Dash will be a good balancing character. I'm surprised they aren't a dog person. They are not actually a dog person, no. I had said that I was gonna play a golden retriever boy, and I think some people took that really, really literally. <laughs> no, he's a human with a golden retriever personality. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it should be fun. I'm excited. So many people, this is so funny. <clears throat> I'm wondering if I never finished Psycho Pass. I literally don't remember anything about Psycho Pass and so many people are like, this is the plot to Psycho Pass. I'm like, is it? God, I do not remember that. so that you're higher up in my DMs so that I remember. The fan art of Dash as a golden retriever boy is already amazing. Yeah, the way that everybody's drawing him is very good. Yeah, go watch it. First episode's up. It's up on YouTube, even, if that's how you would prefer to watch it. <clears throat> I saw it! Yeah, there's, uh, there's now event reminders for all of the D&D games, <laughs> which is amazing. So thank you for setting that up. No, if you, okay. Look at that. Those are the links that you need. Exclamation point deadbeats. Did you design Dash's brother as well? This is kind of a spoiler. I'll, I'll finger. 
spoiler finger if you don't want to know anything about the first episode of Dead Beats. This, I'll keep this short, I promise, so it won't be up forever. <clears throat> uh, I gave Brett a list of Im important characters to Dash. Um, characters that, that, you know, Brett was free to use in whatever way. Uh, and what they were like and what their relationship to Dash was like. And so um, I didn't necessarily imagine Cooper uh, characterized the way that he was, but I wasn't mad about it. <laughs> so. faster than light. Fingers down now. You're safe. Well, I'm muted, so you'll never know. Don't spoil stuff in chat. There was a reason that we did the spoiler finger. Don't spoil things about about D, D about Neon Divide, none of that. How much havoc was there after the wind? <laughs> My nephew went outside he was a bit stir crazy so he was like i'm going outside for a minute i was like okay so we walked outside and then he walked back in and he was like you need to take better care of those chickens i was like excuse me and he was like it's a mess out there i was like tommy <laughs> do you know what the fuck the last couple of days have been like outside <laughs> Crazy! What do you mean? <laughs> of course, it's a mess out there. I know. My father-in-law was like, "Oh my god, I spent so long putting stuff back together outside." I was like, "Why? Why did you bother? <laughs> it's just gonna keep being windy." He was like, "I know, but it bothers me so much." <laughs> it's like, I'm just gonna leave shit wherever it's landed because lord knows it's not done getting pushed around strong thorn very strong thorn energy yeah <laughs> yeah i do have chickens thus the story yeah Storm Franklin is rolling in now? Haven't we suffered enough? Haven't we had enough of the wind? <sighs> My kayak is on the living room because I didn't want it to blow off the balcony flat. I don't blame you, yeah. Yeah, chairs have blown all over the place. The poor chickens, they must have been so scared. Like even with the run closed, they, uh, yesterday I think, spent a lot of time just in the coop. And I was like, I think, I think something might have gotten blown and like hit the side of the coop or something and they got freaked out. <clears throat> yeah, well, um, we thought, uh, cause I messaged my, my sister-in-law being like, hey, do you still need me? To watch Tommy because like so much stuff was being canceled because of the wind and I was like I'm just double checking that whatever it is you're doing is still happening and she was like I bought a ticket I bought like a I I got a reservation for a hotel room so even though the thing that I was going to do is canceled I'm just gonna spend a day in a hotel and just chill I was like you know what I respect that <laughs> absolutely <laughs> What, this? This is not anywhere near the outlets. It's a it's a eyeball trick. But also, is there a reason not to have a phone near an outlet? Mm. 
No, I still don't have a phone. <laughs> Yesterday, Sam was like, please tell me what phone you want. Please just tell me what phone you want. Because I like, <laughs> it is driving me crazy that you don't have a phone that works. <laughs> it's like, fair enough. And guess they just mean how it's balanced. It's not a phone. It's a uh, it's the controller to the heater. Mm. I've had a Pixel for the last couple years. For the last few years. Um but I might, I... <laughs> Sam was like, I kind of hate you without a phone. I was like, you mean like my vibe, like my personality? He was like, yeah, I feel like you're really looking down on me. <laughs> it's like now that you're all enlightened and you like go to bed without blue screen light and shit. And I was like, yeah, I'm just, well, I'm just a better person than you are now. So <laughs> it's just like, I need you to have a phone again, like immediately. <laughs> So, but uh, I've been thinking about like not getting as souped up of a phone, but I feel like I'll get annoyed with it. <laughs> like, can I just find the balance? Can I just have the fortitude to be able to just leave my phone in another room when I go to bed and stuff and have a phone that has all of the capabilities, but be able to just like put it away? <laughs> can I just exercise that muscle instead of being like, what if I just got a shitty flip phone and just like decided that that's all I wanted? I don't know. You'll find there's so many things you gave for granted. I mean, how many weeks now have I not had a phone? I don't know, but I'm pretty used to it now. <laughs> I'm pretty okay with it currently. It's different when you do have one. That's what I'm saying. So should I just get a shitty phone instead of a really good phone? Because if I get a really good phone again, I'll probably sit on it all the time again. your willpower muscle feels rewarding zen mode okay what is this oops oh my god i put a theme on chrome by the way it's very cute so everything's green now <clears throat> anyways <laughs> zen mode is a feature perfect for those who tend to get distracted by their phones the mode enables you to set a specific amount of time, say 30 minutes, during which your phone will go into a state that is similar to Do Not Disturb, but more customizable. You won't be able to use most of the phone's functions like social media apps for that set amount of time, but you can still make phone calls and use the camera. Also while in Zen mode, you can freely choose to turn on white noise. Wait, so what is this for? Like, what type of phone? Or is this... One Plus? What is that? Oh, you can put it on any Android phone. Interesting.
sounds just like high energy saving mode on any of my last four Samsung phones. Hmm. Okay, I'll look into this stuff. I'll look into this. Yeah, being able to just like tap a button to say, if somebody needs to call me cool, <laughs> but that's it. <laughs> that's all that I want to have happen on this phone right now. That would be perfect. a good dad who Bowser <laughs> yeah I'll have to look into the because all of these terms don't mean anything to me unless I see what they actually do you know tries his best so he gets dad points for that yeah i think it would be a little far to say that being bowser's child would be free of a toxic environment but <laughs> i think that's pushing it a little far <laughs> be like what a good dad i wish bowser was my dad not me not me Maybe you could walk away being like, wow, that environment really fucked me up. But, you know, my dad did do his best. That counts for something, I guess. <laughs> All of Mario is theatrical and Bowser is a dad actor. Like he's playing the part of Bowser and behind the scenes he and Mario are like best buds. <laughs> Sam found me passed out on Clark's old bed again and I was so disoriented. So like I, I put Clark to bed and Sam was like, you are so fucking tired, right? Cause again, Friday night was, I managed to get three hours of sleep before Neon Divide this time, not ideal. So my energy level was not up to par for Neon Divide, to be honest, but um, woke up, did Neon Divide at 2 a.m., was there until 5.30, stayed awake until six. No, yes, stayed awake until six. Clarky was still asleep, so I was like, I'm gonna plop onto her bed, her old bed and try and get like an hour of sleep. Got like half an hour of sleep and then was woken up. And then my nephew showed up and then I was with Clark and my nephew for the whole day. Came home, we had dinner and stuff and Sam was like, <clears throat> when we do bedtime, you are 100% gonna just pass out. Do you want me to wake you up? Like if you fall asleep in her bed or something, do you want me to wake you up? I was like, yes, please. So I, Sam made sure that I was out of her room and awake and up and alert <laughs> so that I could go to bed in my own bed. I was like, I'm gonna stay awake for a bit. I'm gonna stay awake for a bit. He was like, okay. I sat at my desk, immediately started falling asleep at my desk. So I was like, okay, well, I'm just gonna like curl up on Clark's old bed that's in the, that's like in the landing right here. I was like, I'm gonna curl up on Clark's old bed and do some reading. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that that would keep me awake. <laughs> So Sam comes upstairs and I'm just like, just like passed out. And he wakes me up and I was like, 
Oh my god, is it morning? Is it morning? Are you wh what time is it? He was like, uh, it's eleven. <laughs> I was so out of it. I was just like, what's going on? Did I sleep all night? What time is it? <laughs> he was like He was like, honey, I'm begging you, please just go to bed. <laughs> Yeah, am I still in VR? <laughs> it was very silly. <laughs> so, uh, fortunately, got a shit ton of sleep last night. I was an alert, excited, active mom this morning. It was great. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, wakes up. Sam, the coffee machine is spawning guns. <laughs> it's like, honey, go to bed, please. Oh my god, that's absolutely happened to me. Because I've always been a napper. I've always loved a nap. But sometimes you wake up and you're like... What's happening? <laughs> right? There, I can think of so many moments in my life where my mom would come into my room and be like, Honey, come and eat. And I thought she was waking me up for breakfast the next day. But it was actually for dinner <laughs> of the same day I fell asleep. <laughs> And yeah, same thing, where I would get up, I'd be like, oh my god, get up, I'd like walk into the kitchen and be like, and you know, especially uh, there's a certain time of year, right, where outside, like out the window, breakfast and dinner happen when it's equally dark outside, right? So I came downstairs, was like, oh my god, oh god, what, what's happening? And then looked at the food that was on the table and realized... That's not breakfast food. Oh my God, it's nighttime. <laughs> Just so unbelievably out of it. Because um, it might be more confusing in my house. Like if that happened to Clark as a teenager or something, she might come downstairs and see the food and be like, I still don't know what time it is. But my mom was always a very staunch like, this is breakfast food, this is lunch food, this is dinner food, right? So, um, I, yeah, <laughs> the second I came downstairs and saw, like, stew, right? I'd <laughs> be like, oh, it's not morning, it's not morning, definitely not. Did you never have breakfast for dinner? That was not a thing in my house, no. <laughs> but like, for example, this morning, um, Clark wanted banana pancakes. Banana pancakes, the base for banana pancakes is one banana and one egg, and you mix that up and you cook it as though it's pancake batter and they basically turn into little pancakes. Um, so there you go. If, you know, if you want like a, a high protein pancake sometime for yourself. Uh, they're really good for, for littles, for like toddlers, and Clark still loves them. But we add a bunch of other stuff now. Like she wants chia and cinnamon, and we put oats in there and like all kinds of shit. Um, but the, the base recipe is just is just one banana, one banana to one egg ratio. So made those for breakfast because that's what she wanted and we had a bunch of bananas around that were like on the cusp, you know? Um, and she was like, mommy, are you gonna have some? And I was like, well, honey, I'm actually allergic to bananas now. And she was like, oh yeah. And I was like, so I'm gonna have spicy fried rice for breakfast. She was like, I don't want that. I was like, yeah, I know. So breakfast was us sitting on the couch and her shoveling like 
20 tiny pancakes in her mouth while I ate extremely spicy fried rice. So, you know, like breakfast and, and lunch and dinner are kind of loosey goosey in this house. <laughs> Allergic now? Mm -hmm. I have in my adulthood developed an oral allergy to bananas. If I eat them, they make my mouth sting for the rest of the day. It's not, it's not ideal. Um, but yeah, allergies can develop as an adult. <clears throat> one banana mixed with one egg and cook it. That seems so simple. It is. If you have a bunch of bananas around and you were like, "Wow, I really don't want to bother going to the extent of making like banana bread." <laughs> You can, yeah, put bananas into a bowl and mash them up the same way if you were making banana bread. Mash them up. Um, obviously, it's best when they're really, really ripe. And then, uh, yeah, so say if you did two bananas, crack two eggs into there, mix it all up, and then and then just cook it as though it's, it's going to be... It's not going to be as smooth as pancake batter, right? But for whatever reason, it cooks in a way where... Uh, it cooks like little pancakes. It's very bizarre. I do think that adding things like um, oats, like quick oats to it, I think, you know, strengthens it a bit, but yeah. I would not try this with waffles, to be honest. <laughs> Pancakes, sure. I think trying to use this idea with waffles will just wind up with a really, a really dirty waffle maker. <laughs> I tend to add a little bit of oats or flour so that they don't fall apart, but I've been making banana pancakes really often lately. Yeah, it's nice. It's very easy. <sighs> What's the thing we need to remind Duger to find tomato for again? I don't need to find tomato. Tomato's character um, has updated art for... Uh, for Godforged, and I make the intro slash BRB screen with all of the art in it. Um, I'm, I edit that together for Godforged, and we're doing Godforged tonight, so I want to add it in, swap out the old art for the new art for the intro oh, before um, before we have our show tonight, and make sure that Joe has time to like download it and stuff. Randosar, welcome to the Cat Gang. Thank you very much. I thought we were talking about tomato pancakes. N no, no. <laughs> Is God Forged continuing? Yeah, it hasn't stopped yet. We're still going. Yeah, we've, I mean, we've been going. We haven't, we haven't taken like an extended break or anything or like designated seasons or anything. Uh, but yeah, Tomato just has new art, that's all. Because of a thing that happened. <laughs> new art yeah i would show it to you but it's not my art so <laughs> but it's by the lovely mariah again who did his original art and is a very talented person yes the penguin character went and got a haircut and now has brand new art you caught you, you figured it out that's the one 
He plays a penguin. How difficult would it be to start or catch up to Godforged now? Um, honestly, Joe fairly consistently does recaps that are like, here's, you know, what happened in the first 20 episodes. Here's what happened from episode 20 to 40. Um, pretty much any time we need to like cancel, uh, if we need to cancel Godforged, we'll, uh, if there's enough content there, Joe will do a recap. So what you can do is you can watch all of the recaps up to like, you know, as recent as possible and then start watching from there if you wanted. That would be the easiest way to go. So I would say it's not as difficult as it is with a lot of shows. He just did a recap last week. So there you go. Does Joe only have Godforge that he's DMing? Uh, for now, yeah, but he's starting new stuff soon. So. I need to catch up, but D&D RP banter gets cut out of most recaps, so I must watch it all. That is true. You do miss out on like what the characters are like interpersonally and stuff, but you know, if somebody wanted to be able to watch episodes live and they just don't have the time to watch 70, 80 episodes of a thing, um, it's, it is nice to have a recap. Does Joe do fan art at the end of episodes? No, but we do add all of the fan art to the thing that I edit, the intro. So the intro has basically all of the fan art. Um from, uh, yeah, but basically all of the fan art that's ever happened is in that intro. to update it like once a month I think is the goal to add stuff in so I want to make sure that I do that today <gasps> Nick is Nick in here realized we messed up didn't we hold on we messed up because we put Yuli oh my gosh wait um okay hold on it needs to go here just realized that sorry let me just do this just really quick Right, and so now it's there. Because I was like, I don't think, oh, but she's still not there. Hmm. Oh, that's why, I think. I think this is why. I think that's why. No, she's still not there. Oh my God, Yuli, why are you there? Wait, what's happened here? Why is Yuli not in the right place? I needed to do that right now. You're also in the sky now? What? Oh my god, everything got pushed! Wait, everything got pushed! Why does this happen? Why does this always happen?
Okay. It's fine, I guess. It's fine. <laughs> I don't know why it does that. It like pushes everything to different places. I'm not sure why. Who's that on the far right? Uh. Oh. Ahem. <clears throat> This? <laughs> Do you mean this sweet girl? <laughs> Is that who you meant? <laughs> yeah, it's called Darth Peppa. <laughs> the file is called Darth Peppa. It makes it really easy to find it. There's some really stupid shit on that screen. <laughs> it's easier if everything has a goofy name. It's true. Because you just never know. There's just so much, there's so much stupid shit on here that eventually somebody's gonna be like, who's the guy in the sky? Why is there a dabbing dooger with a quest? I don't know. I do know, but. This is such a wonderful way to start my birthday. Happy birthday! Speaking of, who is the guy in the sky? That is Vampire Dad. That's Vampire Dad. We rebuilt him from the ground up. We rebuilt him, this man, this sky man. He's attached, he's actually attached to the background, so. <laughs> But, uh, he's a special boy. What's the roundy looking thing on the counter? On the, on the corner? The roundy looking thing on the corner. This? I assume that's the only thing I can think of. Yeah, it's a heater. It is not Dyson, but it is a heater. It is not Dyson, but it is a heater. We have um, some of the like, we have a couple of the bladeless Dysons that are just fans, just for cooling. Um, but this one is a Peter and it is not Dyson brand. I miss where Vampire Dad came from. He's from a hit movie called Vampire Dad. <laughs> The hit 2020 film, Vampire Dad. 2020, right? We were horrified. Yeah. Um, look up Vampire Dad. Vampire Dad movie. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, you know, sometimes what's written on the tin is exactly what it is. <laughs> Maybe the movie's amazing. Who knows? Huh. 
yeah, I did not find it by searching Vampire Daddy. Um, I did search Vampire Dad, though, and found a bunch of pictures from the hit 2020 movie Vampire Dad. I successfully managed to iron out some of my PC's backstories while we were chatting. Another one down. Nice. Good movie. Who knows? <laughs> Lord knows I haven't seen it. Who's to, who's to say? Is it? Four point seven out of ten on IMDb. <laughs> Beautiful. No, we tried. We wanted to Vampire Dad to be what we watched for the watch party, but it's not available for watch party, so. So, it's fine. Just move on with my life. I know. There's nothing else I want to watch. Nothing else that can compare. <laughs> it's fine. Forty percent raise for the watch party. Let's go, let's go. Are you hyped for the second season of Vinland Saga? Yeah, of course. Of course. Um, I don't know how to talk about it without being super spoilery, though, so I'm not going to. But yes, I'm very excited for second season of Inland Saga. Is The Watch Party going to be a movie or a show? Uh, I mean, it's only going to happen once, so movie, probably. The thumbnail was you enlarging Darth Peppa just now? Good. <laughs> Whatever system uh, grabs thumbnails for streams knows exactly what it's doing. <laughs> same reaction as you, I'm super excited to be able to talk about it though. Yeah, same. Same. I'm really curious to see what people think about season two. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wah, wah, wah. These Twitch thumbnails are art. Yes. Agreed. Oh my gosh. Also, again, no spoilers, but shout out to today's Wordle. Shout out to today's Wordle. <sighs> It was a good one, yeah. I had to ruminate on it for a little bit. Yeah, I'm, uh, how many in am I? 37. I have, I have yet to lose. When I lose the first time, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> but I'm, th I'm 37 wins in. All your stats were deleted, no! Yeah, I've done Quirtle. And, um, uh, oh my God, what's the, what's the battle royale one? Squabble, right? Yeah, squabble. Squabble is very fun. I've done quite a bit of squabble. Yeah, I'm not touching the math ones. No, thank you. 
Yeah, the battle royale one is fun. Because uh, you just... You try to answer as many words as you can. And not get kicked. Um, he's, he's like six, I think, so he's pretty easy to watch, honestly, um, and pretty easy to talk to, but, you know, eventually, as always, um, they got really sick of each other, and they were just kind of antagonizing each other, so I was like, well, this is the part that's not fun, you know. Um, but, overall, yeah, it was good. Save me from my own brain. <laughs> the second that I put the headphones on, it's paranoia. It's paranoia that the second I have headphones on, something's gonna happen and I'm not gonna be able to hear it. It's not nearly as bad as it was, but oh god, more wind warnings, UK to see gales and downpours, more travel chaos and power cuts threaten the UK, amber weather warning issued. Oh my goodness. What? Oh my god. I need to try and get the chickens like set up. They're gonna get blown away. What the hell? <laughs> Protect the chickens. Are your bins down the road? No, because our neighbors were awesome and grabbed our bin. Basically, the second that our bins got picked up and emptied, they grabbed all, all of ours and put them all in their garage. I was like, oh my god, you guys are the best. They were like, if we didn't, they were going to wind up down the road. So we just grabbed all of them. I mean, they have a coop. They have something stable that they can sit in. I just need to, I need to make sure I don't let them out at all because I don't want, I don't want them getting blown away. Oh 
Yay for neighbors. I know. They're so sweet. <laughs> Flying chickens ain't so bad. It would be pretty bad, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it would be pretty bad. I thought you lived in Canada. I don't. I live in England with my little family. Stop touching it. Stop touching it. Amber warning tomorrow's from Northern Ireland. That's less concerning. Okay, that's, I mean, it's not good, but I'm glad it's not where we are. <laughs> yeah, Neon Divide was great. I was saying I, I managed to record it um, I didn't have the like front facing camera along with the normal first person camera, but I did record it. I'm going to cut it up into like the important bits. I know it worked. I really want to like, I haven't done any like good editing in a long time. So I'm having to remember how Premiere works, but I would love to, the way that I imagine these recordings going, I, I want it to almost feel like Moral is the one that edited them. Does that make sense? <laughs> like, like what are the important things that happened in the day from Moral's perspective? <coughs> And I also feel like moral, if, if given, if, if moral knew how to use an editing software, right? Like what sort of stupid shit would they zoom in on? And like, <laughs> like that sort of stuff. I think that would be so funny. <laughs> yeah. There's a character, oh, I think his name is Shiloh, who's just who's just dope. Um and anytime uh Moral sees him, we like high five forever. Moral would be like, this fucking guy <laughs> the best, you know? <laughs> like that sort of shit I think would be really funny but I need to like relearn how to use Premiere because it's been so long since I've edited anything. <laughs> like how dad's doing barbecue YouTube videos, zoom in on random stuff. It makes no sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <coughs> exactly. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that I've edited recently is the Godforged video. And that's, you know, that's basically just like a more streamlined PowerPoint almost. So yeah, we'll see. I edit, yeah. Here, I'll just show it to you. I've shown it to you guys before. Yeah, 
Yeah, well, it's just, I mean, it's, you know, it's all the fan art and stuff. I need to have this open anyway so that I remember to change it. <clears throat> I went to school for editing and I underestimated how much work it is. I'm kind of glad I never got a job doing it. Some people love editing. It's their favorite part. That has never been me. <laughs> I've never, I've never enjoyed it really. Um, uh, yeah. So this is the video. So let me grab the actual video and I'll show it to you. there uh oh where do i put where have i been putting this uh oh where have i been putting this oh my god i'm so confused playlist is this it's called video game study lounge the song's a bit intense right now though i'm just gonna search for it there it is where is this open file location where did i save it it's just on my desktop Do, but that's fine. <laughs> Where is it? Here it is. <laughs> this never lines up right, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> this is never in the right spot, no matter what I do. And if I, ch if I change it now, next time I use it, my face will be in a totally different corner. <laughs> no, I've been really good lately. I've been really good lately. Whatever. Okay. This is... This is it. Oh my god. Fit to screen. So this is the, this is the video. Um, this is why I called it a glorified PowerPoint. It like shows off each character. So I'm swapping out like the character art for Adelward, which is Tomato's character, but it shows like all the art um, and who did it. Um, the bunny that obviously has chaotic menace energy is me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is, and even the, the um, stuff in the background is fan art, which is very cool. So I just need to add to this and swap out this. I wish that this was the music that played during this. <laughs> okay, but file hosting is different, all right? That's different. When something's like, I need I need a URL location for this thing, I'm instantly like, <laughs> fuck okay and just sometimes it's just easiest to throw a thing in discord okay you're making me want to make one of these do it do it it's so fun if you don't have so like godforged um for the longest time just had like a static not static it moved a little bit but like a picture that was just the whole intro um and then all of the breaks were uh like a few bits of of art and i went to joe and i was like hey like you have enough stuff that you're juggling i can totally make a thing if you want and i can be the person who like adds stuff and he was like okay 
I know people that have secondary personal dis discords just for file hosting. Me too. Discord is just an easy way to like pop something in and be like, great, copy file link. <laughs> Yeah, Discord doesn't delete anything. Keep that in mind. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Discord doesn't delete stuff. So these the pictures that I was talking about that I put <laughs> that I put in a conversation with Alex. Um, once I right click those and say copy file location or copy file link or whatever it is that it says, if I use that link somewhere, it's not ever gonna lose that. So. You can also make a WhatsApp group with only yourself, but you can't, you can't like copy a file directly from WhatsApp. You can? Interesting. Bit weird. <laughs> that feels a bit weird. Mega scuffed. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, I feel like everything that I've tried to like send my mom through WhatsApp, like videos and stuff, they get compressed to absolute hell. <laughs> info on discord is hidden under layers of memes there is that yeah i love when i see a meme or something that has two different watermarks on it like somebody tried to watermark it and then another person stole it and put a new watermark on it and you're like okay <laughs> He'll do more TikTok stuff. Um, my mods have talked with me about doing TikTok stuff. I've said before that like, it's hard for me to imagine doing TikTok stuff because I don't think that, I don't think that I consistently do things that are um, entertaining in like a, in a cropped version. Does that make sense? <laughs> Like, I can't imagine what I would consistently upload to TikTok. I'm not, I don't feel like I create content that works for that very well. Yeah, well the, the idea, right, is that a lot of people are able to take clips from their streams so you're not having to make new content. You're just having to like um, figure out what bits of it, of content that you've already made are good for different platforms is the idea. So um, can I imagine specific moments 
of my streams that are consistently like funny in a 30 second to one minute package, not really. Look, I love TikTok. I think that there's a lot of in, like incredibly good information that becomes available on TikTok. Um, but in terms of me like being a TikTok creator, I don't, I have no idea what I would even do. on TikTok only. It doesn't mean you're getting old. It just means that TikTok isn't like the right, you know, platform for you. It's not enjoyable for you. You could upload clips of your streams on TikTok. That's exactly what we're talking about. I don't think that I'm a good... I don't think my streams are good clipped. I also think it's, it's worth saying for any of you who have like looked at TikTok once and were like, wow, this is a shit show. It is a shit show when you first open it. It has a really good algorithm that figures out over time what you actually want to see. So the first time that you open it, yeah, you're going to see all of the like really stupid shit <laughs> that is not funny, that is like not good. Um, but like, you know, when I open it, it's entirely um, like stuff about parenting, um, D and D goofs, um, cool science stuff, gardening stuff. Like that's those are the things that I want to see, and that's all that it shows me. And if it does show you stuff that you don't like, you can just be like, I don't like this. Don't show me stuff like this again. And it doesn't. <laughs> it's like, it actually is really effective. It's really good at, fig if you like spend a little bit of time with it, it's really good at figuring out what you want to see. Yeah, tattoos. I get a lot of tattoo stuff currently. I don't like the TikTok dancing stuff or pranks or jokes or whatever. Yeah, that stuff is what it's gonna show you at first and then it's not gonna show you that ever again as long as you're like, no thanks. <laughs> it showed me that stuff for exactly one day, I think, and then was like, all right, you hate this. Got it. <laughs> yeah, cottagecore stuff. Show me really aesthetic people baking, um, you know. Show me like 60 year old lesbian moms who are just vibing, you know, like it knows what I want now. <laughs> it just It just shows me like hyper specific things for me. Lots of crafting stuff. Uh, currently lots of people who are getting ready for spring to like start planting a bunch of shit. Um, you know, it's great. My Instagram algorithm well trained. It pretty much exclusively shows me shirtless men holding kittens. Nice. specific <laughs> definitely oh 
Oh, yeah. If you want to... Uh, Hank Green put out a YouTube video that was basically like, here's why TikTok is bad, actually. And it talked about how, like, how terribly the system is set up to incentivize creators to, like, actually do anything. Um, it was really, really interesting. As a person that does not make content for TikTok and doesn't know anything about, like, what the back end is like... Um, it was really fascinating. I don't remember exactly what the video is called, but I'm sure if you look for Hank Green TikTok bad, it'll probably pop up. <laughs> Actually, wait, let me see. I can, f you know what? I'll find the exact title for you. Oh, it's called So TikTok Sucks. There you go. It's called So TikTok Sucks. Keep in mind, Hank Green makes a ton of TikTok content, so, like, he knows a lot about it. I'm not going to explain it. I just think that you guys should go and watch the video, because I won't be able to explain it properly. But it's called So TikTok Sucks. Go watch the video if you're interested in, like, how the creator program works for TikTok. It's bad. <laughs> What, Alex? <laughs> what the hell? I think I liked Hank Green TikTok bad better. It's a better title. It is a better title. I will I will take credit for that. Um, unfortunately, he called it so tank so TikTok sucks. Not nearly as good, but it's fine. It would have been a perfect clip for TikTok. I bet that wouldn't get suppressed at all. <laughs> oh my gosh. The music has been so epic today. What's that all about? Feels like a little too intense, you know? <laughs> I need to get new shoes. My old ones lasted 10 years. I'm gonna go through all my clothes again. I just did recently, but I feel like I didn't get rid of enough stuff. So I'm gonna go through it all again. I also got a container to put like, cause you know, I have so many, I have so many like shirts that I bought um, that are like friends shirts and stuff like that, you know, like merch. And I wanna keep it, but I don't necessarily want it like in my closet in rotation all the time so I got I got like a bin um to put like kind of like keepsake clothing in basically I don't think a pair of shoes has ever survived more than two years what oh my god I wear my shoes until they're absolutely falling apart I've tried making a blanket before and it did not go well, so I will not be trying to do that again. Unless I find somebody who's like, I successfully make these all the time. They'll just, they're, they're gonna sit in a box. <laughs> do you do I haven't worn this for X years at it goes? No, because then I would literally not own any dresses. I like having dresses around for when I want to wear a dress. Um, if I did the like, I haven't worn this in a year, or I haven't worn this in six months, <laughs> I would have no nice clothing. <laughs> <clears throat> 
so yeah subs r and I hope you're doing well good to see you in chat bud I got rid of all my nice clothing when I moved comfy for life I just like having the option like obviously I wear this shit nearly every day but man when I get an opportunity to like spruce up I think it's very fun to do it it's like a once a month maybe sort of thing, but the option is really nice. Arnar is at sea. Same, I love dressing up, but most of the time I look like a gremlin. Yeah, you know what? Why not? Everyone like, oh my God, you're so smart when I got to the office and I'm like, yeah, cause I wear sweats and a hoodie most of the time. You know, the opportunities, the opportunities to try and spruce up if you enjoy the process of doing that. That being said, thinking about it, I have a couple of dresses that pretty much every time I'm given the to wear a dress, I don't wear them. I choose I choose something else. So maybe I should get rid of those. <laughs> oh my god. I'll never forget when um you know, when there started being all of these esports events and it became such a goof that like every person who was doing like StarCraft commentary and stuff would just show up in a t-shirt with a blazer over it. And, <laughs> and people were like, is this, is this just, is everyone gonna do this? Is, that, is this what we're doing now? And obviously there's like a big, like some people do that, but some people like, dress up really nice to do it, right? Um, but at the start, there was such a weird pushback of like, but this isn't, but sportscasters don't look like this, right? It's just funny, I just unlocked a memory just then. I need to get stronger walking shoes or boots next. I've been doing a lot more walking. Yeah, I keep saying that I need like more insulated boots because I love going for walks, but it's been so cold out that basically the second I'm outside, my toes are freezing. <laughs> Sweater dresses with thermo leggings. I've always hated that look on me. Which is hilarious, because I love, like, really oversized shirts and stuff. But, like, for some reason, sweater dresses make me feel like I'm a baby. Like a tiny baby. <laughs> Don't worry, I have thermal socks. I have really thick, warm socks. And it does not help. <laughs> My poor toesums. That's okay. <laughs> I'm just not as equipped for the cold as I used to be. LA changed me. I don't mind the cold, but when my hands and feet get cold, for some reason, and of course, I'm like a barefoot demon, so I really don't like wearing socks very often. I'm barefoot almost all the time. But, um, <laughs> sorry, I just realized my kid put a sticker on the controller. Anyways, uh, 
but like my actual toe digits get really cold really easily. I don't like slippers either. I don't like anything being on my feet unless they have to be. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why, I can't explain why. But like my hands never feel cold. The rest of me is normally fine. It's just my feet. <laughs> I do this to myself is what I'm saying. friend got me those socks with grips on them as a joke last year and I started wearing them unironically this year. Clark has started, um, Clark is old enough now that she realizes why some of her socks have grips on them. Um, but the older she gets, the socks that are available for us to get her don't, don't always come with grippies on them, right? So sometimes she'll fall She'll have socks on and she'll be walking through the house or running through the house and she'll fall and then she'll be like, there are no grippies on these socks. <laughs> and we're like, that's, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Cause obviously grippies on the bottom of socks for toddlers is to help them learn to walk and not eat shit, right? I'm like, well, maybe you're big enough now that you can learn not to run and slip all the time. <laughs> yeah, betrayed by the socks, dude. The age they figure that out is 10. I ran up the stairs, I think my entire life. I can't remember a time that my dad wasn't saying stop running up the stairs and I just for some reason ignored it my entire life. We got Clark her first shoes with laces, yeah. And so she keeps trying to practice tying laces, which, you know, it's gonna take a while for that to make any sense, but she tries, she tries really hard. It's very cute. I did used to gallop up the stairs on all fours. I actually tried doing that just a couple days ago. Cause I was like, this is how I used to always go up the stairs and it does not feel good anymore. <laughs> I do not like it. Um, but yeah. <laughs> I only know how to tie my shoes the bunny ears way. That's the way that like a lot of cartoons are trying to teach her how to do it. There are easier ways to do it though, I think. But like in terms of imagery and like visuals, I think um, I think they go for the bunny ears thing because it's easy to imagine bunny ears, you know. I've fallen down the stairs more as an adult than I ever did as a reckless child. I have like, uh, I've talked about this on stream before. I think as recently as when Kristen and I were playing together, but uh, um, I have like a, a weird uh, fear of falling down the stairs. I don't think, I don't think that I've ever fallen down the stairs, but I have like a pretty intense fear of it. So pretty much every time I go down the stairs, I go down really slowly and I have to hold on to the banister because I'm really scared of falling. I don't know why. Actually, the only time, the only time that I've kind of fallen, but it wasn't much of a fall, it was like a really little one, was when I was super pregnant and everybody freaked out, obviously, because they heard somebody falling down the stairs and I was the only one not in the room. Um, but it was, it was literally like I, I slipped and landed on my butt and then slid on my butt down like five steps. So it hurt like hell, but I, I was fine, you know? 
That's the only time that I can think of that I've ever fallen down the stairs. Shout out to everybody who runs up the stairs on all fours. Just trying to... Have you guys ever... Some of you are going to say that you do it perfectly. <laughs> I had a friend who was always able to do this super fast. It's really good dexterity training. But she used to do it with a quarter. And I can't even do it with a thing that's like long. <laughs> Where is, do I have a quarter or like a coin somewhere? I don't think so. No. I was looking at your face. I didn't understand what you were talking about. Yeah. It's... <laughs> I guess like part, some of this is harder if you're using something long. The one that people normally do with pens, right, is is like, they like flip it. They like, they like flip it on top of their hand almost in like a weird way. to do that in so long the like the like knuckle thing i feel like i saw a pound coin in here somewhere recently i don't know why there would be one though Not in here. The knuckle spin. Maybe one of our, um, maybe someday we'll do a study hall and it'll be learning how to do like weird hand dexterity tricks. Oh, this? No, it's, yeah, it's just a knot. Yeah, the clean keyboard's great. <laughs> Big fan. There's already stuff in there. I'm sad. <laughs> but, you know, it'll be easier to upkeep. So. Is that the heater you stole from Sam? Wait. Nobody stole anything. <laughs> away and now there are only eyes <laughs> um <laughs> long story short uh sam told me that i could borrow the heater if i wanted to and then when i actually did he used it as tweet bait to tweet about how i stole his heater so he's a loser My streamer. <laughs> fake drama, fake drama for Twitter. Unbelievable. <laughs> Arnar is a marine biologist. 
so yeah, um, for a few months out of the year, he's on a ship studying stuff. It's very cool. So shout out to Arnar, we hope you're safe. <laughs> Yarnar, exactly. Exactly. Okay, let's wrap up. Let's get going. Let me open this up. Uh, we have two Valentines. First one from Kings Warrior says, sending everyone in chat a hug and a pat on the back. Some of you are struggling and I want to encourage you. You're stronger than you realize. You're braver than you realize. You're beautiful, talented, smart, kind, and you're just phenomenal. Keep pushing forward. Destroy everything that gets in your way. You will go far. And the story of how you survived will inspire others and show them that they can do it. You're beyond special and you mean the world to me. And Arnar said, I'm glad to tune in for a bit before the shift. We're heading out again from our sheltering spot. Luckily, I've never gotten seasick. I sleep super well in the rocky waves. Nice chill vibes, even on audio only. Remember to take care of yourselves mentally and physically and stay safe. Thanks guys, very sweet messages. Um, I'm unpausing raid leader. If anybody would like to raid someone. And in the meantime, let me look through our activity feed. Clarity at 3 a.m., thank you for the 21 months. Bob at the Dragon for the 13. Lord Cryer for the 15. Megatron for the 63. Kuchikureko for the 13. Armut for the 48. Happy four years. Happy anniversary. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Um, Pinchy, thank you for the 19. Tactful Valkyrie for the 19. Burgers for the 46. An anonymous gift or gifted a sub. Thank you so much. Asher Lee for the 66. Roscoe for the 10. Chinese Peanut for the 22. Boxa for the 84. Barakato for the 17. Rufus Brutus for the 21. Big Rabid Ferret for the 16. Arthur, thank you so much for the 29. Alice Goose for the 28. A11 for the 71. Konataizumi for the two years. Happy anniversary. Thank you very much. We need to at this anniversary screen to when I when I'm tubing. Um, Judas Claw, thank you for the 13. Pyro Wolf Point for the 31. Dilettante for the 13. Endeavor for the 57. Dracalicious for the 19. McBig Hat for the 80. Gabbro for the 20. Meldiron for the 53. Ardark for the 67. Baby Bird's Nest for the 19. Citro for the 75. Jahom for the 15. Nick for the 67. Randasar again, welcome to the cat gang. Thank you very much for the support. Natera for the 14. Sangster for the two. Leandro for the 39. Ritsuka Kira for the 41. Ellie XD for the three. Altair for the 31. Angel Fowl for the two. Yaxel for the 45. Arnar for all the gifted subs. Again, thank you so much. Gokshano for the 26. Xander Prime for the three years. Happy anniversary. Thank you very much. I hope you're having a lovely day. Um, Assassin Duck, thank you for the 19, and Diagonal Diana, thank you for the 10. All right, we have a raid leader. Let's see, let's see. They're doing, um, music stuff, music production. How cool. Okay. Sending you over to Jonathan Ong. Uh, spread love spread joy have a fantastic rest of your day we've got godforge tonight if you're looking for some DD to watch uh otherwise i'll see you guys tomorrow for our normal stream and um first episode of hellions will be happening tomorrow as well i'm gonna be a guest character on there so a couple days of uh DD in a row and yes thank you for the reminder to do some editing so i will see you all next time and bye bye <laughs>